Hello and welcome to Underdog Physics. Today we'll be looking at an OCR practical called Determining the Maximum Power Available from a Cell. You will need one OCR practical instruction sheet, uh, but that's probably copyrighted, so... Um, you will need a 1.5 volts D cell or battery complete with a fancy little box to put it in. Six low voltage lamps. This is one of them. It's rated at about 1.25 volts at 0.25 amps. One easy read or hard read ammeter. One multimeter or voltmeter. I'll be using this as a voltmeter. Lots of leads. Oh yeah! Now that we have all our equipment set up, ready to use, we'll check if our battery is actually alive. We'll do this by completing the first task on the task sheet, which is to measure the potential difference across the cell. So we'll do that now. Next up, we'll try task two, which actually has us measure the current. Now, in order to do this, we actually have to have a load across the battery to avoid any kind of short circuiting. So we'll pick up one of our lamps. Of course, just before you start this practical, you'll want to check that all of your lamps work. And this is easily done once you've checked that your battery is fine. So line up all your lamps in their various holders and test them one by one. Remember, we have to set up the circuit with the ammeter in series with the lamp. So I'll do that now. Fantastic. Now over the course of this experiment we're going to want to measure the current in the circuit, which we can do with this ammeter, but also we want to measure the potential difference across this battery. So what EMF or electromotive force this battery is providing. I'll do this by connecting up my multimeter or voltmeter in parallel with my battery. The circuit diagram for this setup looks like this on paper. Now we have everything set up with our first lamp, we can start taking our readings. As the task sheet states, we're going to start adding more lamps in parallel to this lamp. And on paper, the circuit diagram looks a bit like this. So without further ado, I'm going to do just that in real life and record the results as I go. And here are the results. Luckily, I was able to use the laptop to record my data, making my data analysis easy peasy. But you may not have access to such luxuries in class. Nevertheless, the same procedure applies, so let's go through it. First of all, aside from ignoring the fact I have potential difference readings larger than the rated 1.5 volt, we need to plot a graph of the potential difference against current. Here we go! Remember to include your graph axis titles, units, and a suitable main title. The practical sheet asks us to deduce the EMF of the cell. The EMF is equal to the potential difference across the terminals of the cell when there is no current flowing. Now, we took a reading of the potential difference across the cell terminals at the beginning of the practical, that was 1.88 volt, so we have a rough idea of what the EMF should be. However, it's important to note that despite the fact a voltmeter has extremely high resistance, there'd be a teeny bit of current flowing when we hook it up to the cell. To find out the real EMF, it's best to work it out graphically. We'll start using Ohm's law, that's V equals IR, to set up the following equation. That is, electromotive force equals the current in the circuit multiplied by the resistance of the circuit and the internal resistance of the cell at the same time. I'll see if I can make a video in future to go through this. For now, we'll condense the equation down some more to give us this equation. As you can see, if we reduce the current flowing through the cell to zero, that is, we don't connect the cell to a circuit, the EMF is equal to the potential difference across the terminals. 
The important thing now is that we can flip this equation around and compare it with a standard equation for a straight line graph, y equals mx plus c. Ta-da! With this in mind, we now know that we can use our graph to figure out not only the EMF of the cell, but also its internal resistance. Bosh! If you're using graph paper, now's the time to start drawing some lines of best fit, big triangles, and extrapolating to the y-intercept. But thanks to the magic of computers, I'll just ask my computer very nicely to give me the information I want. I have a gradient of minus 0.24, so this means that my internal resistance equals 0.24 ohm, and the EMF calculated graphically is equal to the y-intercept. This gives us 1.91 volts. It's not quite what we got by measuring the cell directly, but as I mentioned earlier, we were expecting that. Shame that neither answer is anywhere near the supposed 1.5 volts, but I digress. Now, as for the maximum current the cell can provide, we'll extrapolate the other way to where the graph crosses the x-axis. I can do this by setting y equal to 0 and rearranging the graph equation like so, giving me 7.81 amps. The next part on the practical sheet asks us to calculate the power delivered at these points, which I can only imagine is a trick question, since power is given by multiplying the voltage by the current, and our methods of deducing the EMF and maximum current earlier had us extrapolating to points of zero current and potential difference, respectively. Hmm. Lastly in this video, we can calculate the internal resistance using just two sets of data. Looking back at our equation, we can rearrange it to give us an expression for internal resistance, like so, and substitute in our values for the potential difference across the cell terminals and the potential difference in corresponding current for the particular load across the cell. Let's say uh, this one. This gives us an internal resistance of 0 0.22 ohm. That's not bad, but remember we've assumed that no current is flowing at all when we've hooked up the voltmeter. Thanks for watching, stay tuned for part two.